Hey, welcome back. I'm here with the nutrition wizard, Jason Phillips. Jason, I have a question for you. All right. I'm on Instagram. Uh, you know, we're on social media with Mind Pump, and I see on Instagram all the time uh, this hashtag, I I F Y M, <laughs> which stands for if it fits your macros. What is it? Is it great? Is it the panacea that everybody's looking for, or is it <laughs> crap? Oh man. This is such a bad rabbit hole, but I'm gonna fucking love this. All right, let's do it. Um, so if it fits your macros is basically to say that as long as you hit your macros, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, you can eat whatever the fuck you want, okay. right? And, that sounds and great. So it sounds great. <laughs> and, and so in theory, it is great, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm gonna give you some really fucked up things about it that okay. I've seen it, over the years in the industry. And so the one, that's, the one macro that's never talked about, it's not really a macro, but the one uh, nutrient that's never talked about is fiber. Fiber. Right, so, um, and inherently, even if you go to the IIFYM bros, they do talk about fiber. Mm -hmm. They just don't like to publicize that because it's not sexy. It's not right. saying that, hey, I eat ice cream and I eat Pop-Tarts. Yeah, otherwise it'd be IIFYM. Plus fiber. F. Yeah, F. <laughs> and that's not as, that doesn't look as cool. No. But we can make that shirt and try to sell it. Okay, and, I got um, it. Well, or we could get the IIFYM F website. Um, I don't know. Damn but it. there we go. Um, no, so basically that comes down to all these people, and, and it really goes back to like the bodybuilding crowd, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so... It originates, my first, like, uh, the first time I saw it was on bodybuilding.com in, like, some of these crazy forum threads. Mm -hmm. But if you go in, you actually start to look at the demographics that are in. There's a bunch of these fucking college kids, <laughs> right? And they're all bored out of their mind. They got nothing else to do. And they're like, hey, bro, look at, the, look at the yogurt bowl I made today. Like, mine has a cup of yogurt and a cup of cereal and, like, half a Pop-Tart and Jif Whips and, like, <laughs> whatever the else, whatever fucking other <laughs> concoction I can put together. Right, but here's the thing that nobody talks about. These guys get super shredded, and they look really good on us. Yeah, because that's the thing, right? They'll say, "Oh, it fits my macros." Then they'll post a picture of themselves, and they're ripped. And they're ripped. So here's the thing: they got really shredded, and they look really good on stage. I have never disputed that, and I don't think we're disputing that. Right. If it fits your macros, works to look good. But here's the reality: looking good on stage does not equate to optimal health, nor does it equate to optimal performance. Oh, wow. I have that's yet good. to see somebody that breaks a world record either on an Olympic lifting stage or a power lifting stage say, yeah, if it fits your macros, bro, I ate nothing but Pop-Tarts and, mm. you know, yogurt in my, in my macros. So here's the other part of that too is, uh, let's say, fine, you do look good because you're doing the IIFOM model yep. and you're pumping in all this processed foods, your Pop-Tarts, your donuts, whatever. Over a period of time, as your health declines, what happens to your appearance? Well, that's going to get worse as well. That's right. right? Okay. So there's going to be all this oxidative stress. You're uh -huh. just going to end up looking like shit. Glycation is going to take over. You're going to look awful, right? right? Here's the part no one is even talking about right now. And this is the part I'm most concerned about. So when I used to watch the forums, I'd see all these college kids. They'd get in. They would do it. They would do their show. And then they would disappear for like months on end. And it's like, dude, I thought you were like doing the whole reverse diet. Like now you get to eat more. Like you got a, a bigger macro bank account. So you get to, you get to have more sexy shit in your macros. Like show us your crazy concoctions. And they're never around. So then like six, eight months after that. So now we're talking a year, year and a half post show. You finally see them come back on the forums and they're like, oh man, I built this really gnarly relationship with food. Oh yeah. And so here we are within this IIFYM, a restricted calorie setting right? Because they're in a show prep. So the obviously carbs, proteins, fats are, are restricted. Mm -hmm. And all they're focused on is what food am I going to eat? So you start to see training take a backseat. You see social life take a backseat. You see health take a backseat. And dude, all of a sudden, their whole focus of living is going to the grocery store and figuring out what crazy concoction can they eat? It's it's literally That's taking sad. it's literally taking one uh, you know bad relationship with food yeah. and moving it into another. One thing that I've noticed on some of these pages that are IFYM is their 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 Instagram pages are pictures of their bodies or food. It's either ice cream or pizza or donuts or their bodies, and it's kind of displaying that obsession that tends to build it, up. It, it really becomes a really terrible relationship, and it, it builds an emphasis in two, areas that, uh, in two areas only, and I don't think that's balance. And I think that the key to success and the key to long-term success with dieting is sustainability. Mm. And I don't think that somebody focusing their whole life on sugar and on these, because that's what it is, right? Like, yeah. let's just call it for what it is. All these, <laughs> all these treats, like the donuts and all this shit. Hyper palatable sugar food. Yeah, yeah, right? It's refined sugars. And so the emphasis on sugar is going to create some internal ramifications, right? It's going to fuck with your GI. It is going to mess with you long term. It's probably going to reduce longevity. Mm. Um, now, 
I'm not disputing the whole fat loss argument. I'm not disputing that you can look any way you want to look on any food. But I think at some point, and this is me speaking now at 33 years old, and I probably first heard about macros in my early to mid 20s. At some point, your goals do shift, right? At some point, you are going to care about being a parent, about being an adult, about doing, uh, about eating foods that are not marketed to four year olds. Mm-hmm. Right. And, <laughs> and so the reality is, like, while it might be all well and good to buck the trend of the physique industry, you kind of have to get out of that single context. Now, if, if you don't want to go down the old school prep route and you don't want to do the fish and vegetables and all the bullshit, there you go. And you want that to fit your macros and then you want to find balance in your off season, mm-hmm. more power to you. Do I think it's the health that you should that you should be doing? No, especially when you're in a calorie deficit. We know there's ramifications from that alone. I, I think you should probably prioritize nutrient density at that point. Now, now, anecdotally speaking, I've talked to many experienced competitors and they'll tell me that they'll do the IIF lamb route where they fit in all these processed foods or they'll do another route where it's much more nutrient dense, healthy foods and they'll tell me that it actually reflects in their on, physique. Their, on their physique as well. So they'll say, look, I know my calories were the same. I know my macros were the same, but I still look better when I avoid most of those processed foods, is it because health? Well, when you sh- look, at, look at certain foods like broccoli, right? High in indole 3 carbonyl. What is indole 3 carbonyl gonna do? It's gonna bring estrogen down in the body. It's all of a sudden easier to lose fat in your trouble areas. And maybe you're doing so on slightly higher calorie or higher macro diets. Very interesting. So I have this theory in the macro world that if you did macros with high food quality, your macro allotment would actually be higher than if you're eating macros with shittier food quality. Wow, that now that is a very that would be a cool statement. study, yes. right? But I genuinely believe it to be true, and I actually think if you like someone that's out there like Doug Miller, Doug Miller's a macro guy, okay. but he's a very high food quality guy. He's got one of the best natural physiques ever on this planet, mm. um, and and you know he's got his reasonings for the food that he eats. He doesn't doesn't allow himself to dig into that shittier food. Now, what I've done with clients is when I start coaching a client, one of the first things I teach them is macros and calories because that's the first level. Absolutely. But we always progress from there because I think if you get stuck in that counting my counting my macros, counting my macros, fitting things in, like you said, it becomes obsessive. It becomes very obsessive. Issue with food. Intuitive eating is becoming very sexy right now, right? I think the best intuitive eaters started with a macro prescription. Of course. When you master macros, you become very good at intuitive eating. And I tell all my clients when they travel, well, how do I handle when I travel? Don't count anything. But like when you're home, think about it. You typically probably have breakfast, lunch, dinner, one or two snacks in there. Mm -hmm. The composition of your breakfast is what? Like eggs and oatmeal. Mm -hmm. You can probably find that at any breakfast buffet. The composition of your lunch is what? Like a a meat source, a starch, and a vegetable. Great, you can find that at any restaurant. I don't expect you to bust out your pocket drug scale, right? (laughs) I want you to just go there, eat the food, not stress about it. Mm -hmm. You drink a protein shake, great, bring your protein shake. It's not as hard as people make it. They just want to use the excuse that, oh, well, I usually fit a donut in my macros, so I'm going to go to sidecar donuts and I'm going to have like a whole dozen, <laughs> exactly. right? Like, like, no, like that's just you justifying shit yeah. and that's you being immature with your food. Now, what about this aspect of it? Because this is something that I've been finding very fascinating lately. It's the, the hyper palatability of a lot of this food. When you eat a food and you taste it, and hyper palatability basically means something that tastes really, really, really good and nothing is engineered to taste better than processed food. In fact, most of the money that goes into creating these processed and packaged foods goes into hijacking your, your brain systems of palatability. How does that screw you up? Because I feel like- Do you, do you know what hyper palatable, like where those foods, uh, where they elicit the response in your brain? No, explain. It's, it's opioid receptors. Oh, wow. And what's like one of the You're biggest- You're taking heroin when you eat a donut. So basically, <laughs> one, but one of the biggest issues that we have as a culture right now is opioids, right? So if we're, if we're eliciting that response in the same area of the brain with foods, no shit you want more of that food, right? Like, there's a reason people, like, food addiction is a very real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as we all know, drug addiction is. So these companies, they know that. Yep. And, and they don't care about your health. And I don't care if you're eating them in the appropriate quantity. It's still eliciting that response in your brain, which long-term is just creating a fucked-up relationship for you and food and ultimately the dieting process. Because what's gonna happen is now you're defining a calorically restrictive or a macro restrictive process by the response in your brain, right? Which is that opioid receptors and, and the way that you're feeling. So then 10 years from now, let's just say you let yourself go and you're overweight. You're gonna think of the dieting process as being really fucked up because you have that negative relationship with food. It is, and you know, uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things that I've noticed many, many, many times is that if I start to eat lots of these hyper palatable 
processed foods. Uh, normal, organic, you know, healthy whole foods or whatever you, you want to call them become bland. They yep. become more bland. And when I avoid those processed foods, I eat something like a strawberry or an apple and it's, it's just incredibly delicious. Yep. Is that because you're just, again, desensitizing, your brain is becoming desensitized to those I, I would think so. I mean, I'm not sure they've ever yeah. done like exact research on that. Um, I, I, I have to I have to assume it's chemical induced. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. And, and think of it this way: if you can get yourself to a point where, when you eat, you know, the whole, you know, natural type foods, and they taste really good, that's a better place to be absolutely. than eating them and thinking this is bland. I want that box of processed whatever. I want those cheez its and that donut. Because I've I've changed well, just, my brain. Just just because you can do something probably doesn't mean you should. That's a great right. Like to like, dude, we could walk out this door right now and go rob a bank. Physically, yeah. physically, we can do that shit. We won't do that. But we won't do it because we know that there's ramifications. That's right. You physically can put anything you want in your macros. Understand there's ramifications. Absolutely. Ramifications internally, physically, long term, emotionally. That's the shit no one's talking about. But hey, like when they brought If It Fits Your Macros bro to the market, <laughs> it was sexy. It was a way for them to be like, fuck all the gurus that say fish and asparagus. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's right either. No, it was combating another But it was a really problem. cool marketing technique. It has now gone off the deep end, as with everything in the diet industry. It's gone off the deep end. It's a horrible application. Let's let's pull the reins a little bit. Excellent. And, and let's understand Excellent. It. So macros are important. Calories are important. But they're not everything. They're not everything. Excellent. Thanks, brother. Thank uh, you, brother. Listen, if you have a friend that follows IIFWAM, or if you just have a friend that eats too many donuts, <laughs> share this video with them. They would love to watch it. Also, subscribe to this channel. There's new videos all the time.